Hi guys, Neil here, and um, let's talk ramp rates. National Grid ESO recently reminded dynamic frequency response providers that they have to adhere to ramp rate requirements or penalties are likely to follow. But what even are ramp rates? Well, batteries can transition from being off essentially doing nothing at all, to charging or discharging at full power almost instantaneously. Significant changes in power output from a battery can threaten grid stability, so ramp rates are used to slow down a battery powering up or powering down. When batteries provide dynamic frequency response services, ramp rates must be applied to energy actions taken in the opposite direction from the service they're providing. This is because these services work both ways to prevent frequency levels from getting too high or too low. For low frequency services, when batteries export energy to the grid, a ramp rate must be applied when charging. For high frequency services, when batteries are importing energy from the grid, a ramp rate must be applied when discharging. In all of these services, this ramp rate requirement is 5% of a battery's contracted megawatts per minute. Therefore, a battery providing low frequency dynamic containment with 100% of its capacity must take at least 20 minutes to ramp to charging at full power. However, the formula used by the ESO means that ramp rates are longer or slower when less of a system's capacity is contracted into a dynamic frequency response service. If that same battery provides just 10% of its capacity in the same service, it has to take at least 200 minutes to ramp to charging at full power. But why does this matter? Well, it means that batteries that provide frequency response services aren't able to achieve maximum potential trading revenues. Therefore, a battery with a high frequency dynamic containment contract is not allowed to deliver the same energy output at a high price at 5 p.m. as a battery without that contract. Therefore, at certain times of the day, dynamic frequency response services have an opportunity cost. This is created by the lost trading potential in the opposite direction to their frequency response contract. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Will it discourage providers from bidding in just a portion of their capacity to win frequency response contracts? Will prices bid into these services increase to reflect the reduced trading potential? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. That's all from me. See you again soon.